Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Superstars of Wrestling uh, review series for the 18th of September, uh, 1993. 1993, the year a lot of things changed in the WWF. 1993, Diesel, Razor, Sean, I guess you'd say the click uh, really starts to, I guess, formulate and they run 93 to 96. So an interesting time in the, in the territory um, probably 93 to 97 is the last time that I, uh, really enjoyed pro wrestling on a consistent basis. I did enjoy ECW until the end. I have enjoyed AEW and other independents, but the national, uh, WWE product where I felt that it was can't-miss television. The last year of that, for me, was 1997. I'll go back and watch stuff from the 70s before I'll say that uh, anything in the last 25 years... 25? Let's see. 20 would put us at uh, 19... Uh, let's see, 2001. Um, yeah, so almost 25 years. Something like that. 20-plus years, anyway. I wouldn't consider it can't miss television. Were there good segments? Yes. Were there good months? Sometimes. But as far as can't miss television, like it would bother me to miss it. It's been since 1997 or the beginning of 98, probably up until WrestleMania 14 in 98. Anyway, Bret Hart and Blake Beverly um, seems like a demotion in a lot of ways for Hart. I mean, Hart's a former world champion. Um at this point, one, one-time world champion, and to be against one of the Beverly's, Beverly's kind of disappeared for a little while here, um, just seems like a kind of a throwaway, and it's, it's, uh, it's awkward, I mean, nothing wrong with the match, Brett comes off, manages to hit a couple spots, hits the shoulder tackle and the, uh, hip toss, Brett is perfectly fine, but again, you kind of have that cinch up on the arm and uh, attempted to drop the elbow and Brett certainly you know uh, misses a couple shots there and we see Brett with the arm ringer stays on the arm for several minutes uh, Beverly tries to mount a comeback doesn't really get where he wants to get I don't know if the other Beverly had quit I don't know if they had disappeared I don't know what happened there but a crucifix attempt by Bret Hart doesn't go according to plan. Uh, Beverly drops right back, and that's awkward. Uh, headbutt to the back of Bret Hart, and Beverly comes, ends up, uh, you know, getting kicked, getting kicked out, and ultimately, pretty cool stuff. Bret Hart goes into the buckle and gets sent pretty hard. Uh, Irish whip by Beverly doesn't get all he wants on it. Does get enough though, and ultimately, Bret Hart on the receiving end of a suplex. Uh, luckily, both members of the team not here, I don't believe, in the building, and ultimately, uh, Brett doesn't have to take their old tag finish. They do the they do the go-behind roll-up attempt, and Beverly kind of ducks down. A match worth seeing, actually, believe it or not, for the time period. Now, would this be, you know, even where Brett was a year ago? Certainly not, but for the time period, Brett brings something good out of, uh, you know, an undercard guy, and Brett does have that ability up through 97, um, and you can't fault Brett, I've always been a Sean guy, but I respect Brett in the ring, clothesline, and then the elbow drop, and then the sharpshooter, Brett with a victory there, uh, we move to face-to-face -to -face with Tatanka and Bam Bam Bigelow, basically Tatanka says that Bam Bam is disrespectful, attempted to cut the hair earlier, and Bam Bam and Bam Bam is going to have to pay for that. Uh, Luna isn't even in the shot, so maybe she missed TV or is sick or injured or something. But um, needless to say, that's it, it's it's awkward. Uh, the promo really doesn't go too far. Well done, Timothy Wells, Stephen Dunn are here, Russ Greenberg. And Mark Thomas are their opponents, and uh, I always get them confused, to be completely honest. The be their best work in Memphis and Smoky Mountain, if you've never seen their work from that time, uh, worth going out of your way to find it. I, I would definitely encourage you to do that, but really basic stuff. 
Thomas manages to take a couple of uh, arm drags and uh, bring his man down. Greenberg gets tagged in, gets gets hit with a couple of shots. I believe it's Timothy Well. I'm not 100% sure on that. And Ansman Talent rolls him back. Uh, the block of the inverted atomic drop into the clothesline, which is a pretty big deal. And um, ultimately, I can see a uh, run go behind there. Um, and, you know, tries the choke out, doesn't get all he wants on it. Gets barely enough, but does get something. Uh, and uh, the well done. Cuts the ring off. They, I think, were basically brought in to work with teams like the Smoking Guns, the Bushwhackers, kind of just uh, fodder for house shows. They had good matches, but I don't know that they ever were given a push that really meant a lot. Um, you know, then we see the snap suplex. Gets him over. Doesn't get all he wants on it. And ultimately, uh, you know, there's an interesting... Finish kind of a neck breaker into a. I thought they were going to turn it into a Boston Boston crab. Crab. They kind of um, debate over who's going to finish them. That's interesting. And then we go to and then they get the victory from there. Uh, then we go to Tully McShane against Razor Ramon. Razor kind of going into it with IRS at this point. Uh, that kind of peaks around the. Um, the, I guess you'd say fall area, um, you know, well, actually peaks at Royal Rumble 94, so they kind of draw that out for three or four months, uh, Ico Pro is promoted pretty heavily, Razor does the, if something happens to gold, something will happen to you, which is a spot I always loved, uh, once again, Scott Hall, uh, when I, when I chose my stage name for pro wrestling, and, and I've gone by, let's put it this way, I have gone by Scott, uh, since I was about uh, 14, 15 years old, in honor of the meeting I had with Scott Hall uh, at that time. got to grab my phone. We will be back momentarily uh, in two shakes of a lamb's tail. What I find really interesting is that Razor, and sorry about my phone, I couldn't uh, get my, uh, my pause button to work there for a second. Razor is a guy who, for the most part, has the same squash match. He's going to hit the back suplex. He's going to hit the uh, overhead uh, reverse slam. He's going to hit the Razor's edge. But at the same time, at the time, targeted towards kids, it always looked cool. It always looked strong. And you wanted to see it again, even though you've seen it before. I think there's an art form to placing known spots that are lost rather than flashy spots that look cool. If you place even four or five spots as a babyface in the right place in your matches, one in the early part, two in the mid, and one at the finish, you're going to get over, and I think guys have lost that today. Uh, Mr. Perfect, or I'm sorry, Luthig Borga and PJ Walker, who goes on to be just incredible. Think about that. Um, anyway, um, Borga muscles him up and does so pretty aggressively. Headbutts and, uh, almost MMA style, uh, shots to the midsection there. Borga is not at a place where he is wanting to take backward steps. He hits several shots. Along the way, and we see, you know, several short knees, uh, shots under the chin, Borger cuts him off, uh, manages to almost hit like a pop-up uppercut type maneuver. Uh, there is a suplex here that's pretty aggressive looking, and then he kind of does the hanging suplex Davy Boy Smith used to do. I actually wonder if you watched Davy, because it looks similar to Davy's, and that is, that is there as well. Um, you know... There is a an off in the flying clothesline, almost like an IRS flying clothesline, only from a bigger guy. Borger gets the victory. Mr. Perfect and Barry Horowitz, Perfect still in the hunt with Shawn Michaels, doesn't turn 
actually disappears by probably Survivor Series 93, so I don't think he's wrestling too terribly much longer here. Then does the referee spot at WrestleMania 10 as a comeback. So I think we're nearing Mr. Perfect's comeback time in this area. Uh, Horowitz uh, does get a hip toss on Perfect, uh, does try to take him over, and ultimately uh, doesn't get anything he really wants out of it. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, we kind of see a couple of tackles, and ultimately, Leapfrog, dropkick right under the chin, perfect dropkicks are things of beauty, and um, almost like a judo throw, arm drag judo throw, hip toss, Henning still looks good, mocks the padding, Barry on the back, I actually would love to see the whole, um, the winner run of, of Barry Horowitz, that'd be cool. Um, Horowitz actually hits a, a beautiful Northern Light suplex, which was Weird at the time, Henning is giving, though, if he likes you, and obviously he likes Barry here. Uh, rough chops, no fun, uh, by Henning in the corner, and he snaps him over pretty aggressively there. Um, perfect flex, one, two, three, and away we go. Um, the tag team championships have been won by the Quebecers, so I was correct. It was September. I was trying to remember. Uh, basically, they talk about they're going to hold the belts. Uh, indefinitely, they're going to dominate the WWF for the next two years. How they came to that conclusion, I do not know. Maybe that's how long their contracts were. I, who knows? Anyway, um, Shawn Michaels against Dan Duvall. Michaels is still your Intercontinental Champion. He bails out, though, within the next couple of weeks. Quits the company for a little bit, um, leading to Razor Ramon picking up the, uh, picking up the Intercontinental Championship in a battle royal which ultimately leads to the face-off when Sean returned. Some say Sean failed the drug test. Others say he took, took his ball and went home. Others say it's a bit of both. Some even say that at this time he inherited a bunch of money. We don't know the truth, obviously. Sean has talked about it some, but I don't know that even he gave the whole truth anyway. Body slams by Michaels and, and uh, you know, big hip tosses. Takes the guy over a couple of times. Manages to get a... A good go around there, and uh, uh, you know some some hip tosses, and a big power slam along the way. Uh, Michael's pretty dominant. Keep in mind, Kevin Nash, aka Diesel, still out there. Diesel has not found his uh, run as a wrestler yet, though. But he's only been with the company about six weeks or so. Drop kick under the chin. Michael's looks to be in a million bucks. Perfect shape. Big uh, body slam. And then a flying clothesline from the top rope. So I've been watching so much Mid-South, I forget the guys can come off the top and not the second. Anyway, uh, Michaels manages to get the super kick. He's not using it as a full finish yet. But it's around this time that he starts to think that way. Uh, and then we see Shawn Michaels and Diesel confronting the one 2 3 kid in the aisle way, setting up their house show run. I would have loved to. I don't think I ever got to see those two work. I got to see them work tag matches did not get to see them work um singles matches that i recall like no house show matches or anything like that i would have really enjoyed to see that anyway kid is laid out in the aisle way henning comes back out to make the save uh monty blackstone the wife of joe Pedicino, interviews them in the back sean michael says no one embarrasses them diesel basically says he's going to be there to watch sean's back at every given moment and that is that. Smoking guns against Mike Bell and Tony DeVito. Tony DeVito, one of the baldies. Mike Bell, the, the guy that uh, Perry Saturn took out on, on Sunday Night Heat in 2001, 2002, something like that. So that's a pretty big thing. Um, and then, you know, the guns are starting to gain some traction. I'd say they really have their traction by maybe sometime in 94, but... Uh, double Irish whips on the Enhancement Talents big backdrops, and the guns are uh, looking like a million bucks here. Uh, Bart and Billy make pretty consistent tags. Uh, duck down, and the uh, Bulldog by uh, Billy Gun, and Billy is happy, makes the body slam. And ultimately gets to an area where he's happy with everything. Toss across the ring, and there you go. Uh, Billy drops down. 
leapfrogs and a couple of kicks to the midsection. Boom, boom. Gut wrench suplex and actually just uh, drops him flat. Uh, Billy off the ropes does the backdrop and ultimately sets up the sidewinder finish, which I think changes over time. I don't know that they do the backdrop pile driver finish forever, but they do it for a while. And ultimately, Bart Gunn hits the pile driver one, two, three. They win. Face, uh, face to face, Razor Ramon and Doink. Uh, Doink basically makes fun of Razor. Razor basically says that Doink is a con and a coward in different words than that. But that's basically it. We close the program on that note, we will be back. I think there's three more of these that I need to record. Then we'll go back to Mid-South, and I uh, encourage you to keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Till next time, everybody.